Hey guys, hey, today I want to talk to you about the uh, Ford blocks. Now, this is the 351 modified engine that we're going to do a build on here soon, but I've had some questions about, you know, what the differences are between the 302 or the 351 and the, 350, uh, the 351M and the 351 Windsor. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, this is a 302 block. The 302 block has a 4 inch bore and a 3 inch stroke. The 351 modified also has a 4 inch bore. It's the same bore size, which it's a good, a 4 inch bore is a, makes a real good V8. The difference between these two is the 302 has a really short deck height. If we take a look at the top of the blocks here, you can see the difference. The, the 302 has a really short deck, which the deck height is from the center of the crank bore here to the, to the deck of the block. That distance is a lot shorter on a 302. Also, the size of the main journal is quite a bit smaller on a 302. If you go over to the 351 modified, now the 351 modified is kind of, uh, I like to call it their redheaded stepchild because it's kind of a combination of a big block and a small block. It has a really big main bore here, very similar to a 460. Um, the, the main bore on the 351 Windsor, which is, the 351 Windsor is very similar to this 302, but it has a taller deck. But if you if you look at the front of the 351 Windsor, which I don't have a block here right now, but if you look at the front of it, all of this down here is the same. It takes the same front cover, it takes the same cam plate. The only difference is the 351 Windsor has a taller deck here. So it actually takes the same cylinder heads, but because of the taller deck, the 351 Windsor has a wider intake up here. This is also 351 cubic inches, but they change the design a little bit. This is similar to a Cleveland, but there's a few differences. The motor mounts are different. We talked about that before. And if we go around here and we look at the front of the block, this area in the front of the block, see these blocks are height uh, lengthwise, which is what we're looking at here. They're very similar here. But the 351 modified and the 351 Cleveland, they have this extra machined area out here and the timing chain is surrounded in this area here by this this is basically a water jacket boss and the reason I have a 302 here that I'm doing for a customer this is a just a stock rebuild for a Mustang but the way that the water jackets work on this jackets on the 302 are here on the cylinder heads and the the manifold goes here this is our intake manifold and the coolant actually goes through the intake manifold. This is a water port here, and then on the front of the manifold, this is where your thermostat housing goes, and you can see that's, that's part of the water jacket there. So it's what they call a wet manifold. It has water jackets in the manifold, and there's water ports in the heads on the same plane as the intake uh, manifold here. So there's coolant traveling through that intake manifold. Now the 351 Cleveland and the modified differ very much from that in that the water ports are on the deck of the block. There, the, the manifold on this motor is what they call a dry manifold. There's actually no coolant going through it. So I have one of the 351 modified heads here, and you can see that this is the deck surface, and you can see that there the water port is here. If you look on the manifold side of the head, there's no water port or jacket here. It's just now these there's holes in here, bolt holes, and 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 one of these is for exhaust uh, emissions, an emissions port. But basically all we have is four intake ports, but there's no water going through the manifold. The manifold is dry. 
And that's another reason that this block is designed this way because the water travels through here. It comes through the water pump up here and it goes through this area and it's connected into the block this way. So these are dramatically different as far as the way that the coolant gets through the heads and the block and so forth. Now, what's cool about this is if you have a set and, uh, and on this 351 AM, we're going to put Cleveland heads on it because this is a 351 modified head, but the Cleveland heads are very similar in design. They just have a much better chamber and bigger valves. What's cool about it is you can actually take this head or the Cleveland heads and they will bolt right onto this 302. It's the, the head bolt pattern is exactly the same on the modified head as it is on the 302 head. So this is a 302 head that you would normally find on, on one of these. And if we look at it next to the, the Cleveland or the modified head, you can see it's a very different head. However, the bolt patterns are the same and the heads actually will interchange from block to block. One of the things that they did with these 302s is they made what they called a Boss 302. A Boss 302 is basically a 302 that had this design head on it, but it had a, of course, it had a water jacket machined in here or bored in here, just like they had on the 302 head, and this portion of the deck was just blocked off. So it was a canted valve head, which, what, which is what this is, and if you look at the valve guides on these two, Canted means that the valve is laid over this way. So this valve is laid over toward the center of the bore, and this one is laid over toward the center of the bore this way. So these valves are angled. The valves on the 302 head are parallel. They're in line, and it's a wedge-type chamber. So the, the canted valve design, what this does is it allows me to have a bigger valve in here, and because the valve is laid over toward the bore center, I don't have a problem with shrouding. With this type of head, with the valves that are parallel, if I try to put a real big valve in here, not so bad on this chamber because this is a low performance open chamber smog head, but some of the tighter chambers, if you put a bigger valve in here, the chamber actually shrouds the valve and it kills your performance. One of the advantages to this design is again, much larger valve without any shrouding of the valve. Also, the, the canted valve design allows the air and fuel a more straight shot in and out of the bore toward the bore center. So, so these are the performance version of this head. This is a modified head, so it's a smog head, but it's very similar in design. If you wanted to make a 302 Boss, there's a guy in town here that I know that what he does is he actually cuts the water jacket hole here and he machines it uh, well, he, they actually have a, a special manifold, but he, he, he blocks this off, he fills this in, and he actually puts these heads on the 302 and makes, makes uh, a, a boss, like, a, like a, a replica of a boss 302, even though it's not the original casting number or anything. So you can see the contrast on these blocks is, is pretty significant. Okay, so a couple other differences we have here. One thing about the 351 modified is it has a really tall deck height. It has a taller deck height than uh, the 351 Windsor, which is taller than the 302. Hopefully you're keeping up with that. Also, the 351 modified has a really long connecting rod in it. So if we compare the 351 modified rod to the 302 rod, <laughs> uh, yeah big difference. So, and also if I had a 351 Windsor rod here, it's somewhere in between these two. It's not near as long as this one. So, because the 351 modified has such a tall deck from the center of the crank to the deck, they put a really long connecting rod in it. The, the rod is super long. Now, one advantage to a longer connecting rod is that it it the longer the rod, it diminishes the rod angularity instead of having lots of angle, which is very hard on the piston, it diminishes it. Plus the longer rod increase, increases dwell time. So what dwell time is, 
is when this rod comes up to top dead center, the piston's going to stop here, and this is crossing over the center line, and then it's going to go back down. That dwell time right up here at the top is increased, so the piston actually sits here for a longer period of time and gives the flame more time to propagate. So there are some advantages to having a longer connecting rod in the engine. So this is what they consider a long rod motor. What would be really cool, and again, I'll have to look at those, I talked earlier about the fact that you can take that 351 Cleveland head and you can put it on this 302 here. One of these days I'm going to do that. I, I've got lots of 351 heads, uh, Cleveland style heads laying around here. I think I would like to attempt to build a Boss 302. Now obviously it's not going to be an original boss that's matching numbers or any of that stuff, but just take and modify that head a little bit so that it works with the 302 and, and you know they have manifolds, they have a, a special manifold you can get for that. So okay, so another thing is the timing chain covers on these two motors are significantly different. So this is basically the timing chain cover on the Ford 351 modified, the Cleveland's are the same way. And it's basically just a piece of sheet metal. <laughs> um, there's also a lot of other manufacturers that do stuff like that. GM has some motors like this and so forth. So that basically just goes on the front of that area right there on a couple dowel pins and you've got a steel cover and of course the water pump bolts to that and so forth. The timing chain cover on the Windsor and the 302 is aluminum. It's an aluminum cover and one of the drawbacks to this is the water pump bolts to the front of this cover here and we have these water ports here coming out this side and the coolant is actually traveling through the timing cover. Well what happens a lot of times if people don't take care of their cooling systems or because of corrosion or whatever, sometimes the holes will get eaten through this and it'll actually eat through here into the engine and get water in the engine. So. Putting a, an aluminum timing cover on the front of the motor and having the coolant passage go through it, probably not the best idea. Uh, Chrysler did this with some of their engines too, and this can be problematic if this corrodes. These here, you don't ever have issues with that because basically you have a steel plate and the coolant's going through this hole in the steel plate, but it's basically going from the pump right to the block. So. Oh. We look at the bottom side of the block. This is your 302. Um, the 302, it, it really not a very beefy bottom end on this thing at all. I mean, it's okay. You can get by with it. But if we go over and we start looking at the, the 351 in contrast, geez, this thing is, I mean, this thing has got some really big main bolts. It's got a gigantic main bore. It's three inches in diameter as opposed to this little dinky main bore here. So it's a much beefier block. You could probably really beef this thing up and we're gonna build this one and try to, try to make it pretty stout. So there is definitely a big contrast between the lower end of these things. Now if we look at the back of the blocks, this is your typical bell housing pattern on the, the 302. Now the 351 Windsor has basically the same bell housing pattern. We go over to the 351 modified, very different. This is basically the same bolt pattern as the 460. I have a 460 stroker motor sitting here, and I don't want to unwrap that, but the bell housing pattern on the back of that big 460 is the same as this 351 modified. So what that means is you can find a transmission that's designed to go with a 460 Ford and it's also going to work with the 351 modified so you can get a pretty beefy like C6 type transmission for this thing which is a plus I mean that's a good thing so I wanted to have an FE motor here I don't have one it would have been cool to have an FE motor which is what they call a Y block uh, to contrast with these two so that's just a little more insight. Um, hopefully that answers the questions about the difference between the 302 and the 351 modified.
because you know what's cool about this block too I noticed is this is a transitionary year I believe it's a D7 block says D7TE and the thing is Ford casting numbers it's so easy to figure out what year a block is by the casting number because the first digit of the casting number like this case is D is the decade well D for those of you that know Ford's was 1970s the second year is going to be the year so the this is the D7, which is going to be 77. T means truck, and then there's an E at the end of that. And those numbers all mean something. I forget what the E means. It might mean engine. I don't know. But if you check this out, this is what's cool about this particular block. And I just noticed this after I cleaned it up. Now, the 351 Cleveland mounts are like this. They basically go up, now this isn't a 351 Cleveland, but the 351 Cleveland motor mounts are very similar to this. There's a boss here and a boss here, and there's two bolts going up into the block. The 351 modified has a completely different motor mount. The motor mounts are on this plane here, and there's three, it has three bolts to it. But what I noticed is this block has a boss here and here, and I took a measurement on that, and the measurement from the center of this pad to the center of this pad is exactly the same as the 351 Cleveland motor mount. So this block, you could actually center punch, drill and tap this and set this up for the 351 Cleveland motor mounts. Not that that really matters any, but you know, you could do it. So the reason you would might want to do that is because the 351 motor mount with these three pads here, it's it's kind of a, it's like I said, it's a stepchild. I mean, the, there's it's really a unique motor mount and no other engine that Ford made had this motor mount pattern. It was unique to the modified. And I think they did that on purpose because they didn't want people, you know, getting this motor mixed up with a with a Cleveland. They, they changed it and made it different. And of course the bell housing pattern's a 460. So. So hopefully that gives you a little insight. If you, if you have any, any questions or comments, uh, make sure you let me know below. I'm gonna do a question and answer uh, session here pretty soon. I got a bunch of questions. I'm gonna have to sort through and get some of your questions and answer the ones that I think are, are some of the better questions. So it's my vintage iron 7512 on Facebook or my Vintage Iron 7512 on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, leave any comments or whatever below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I can't promise I'll get to all of you because I get 100 emails a day. So I'm doing the best I can, but stay tuned because we got some cool Ford stuff coming up here. And I know there's, there's lots of Ford fans out there. For you Chevy fans and you Mopar fans, don't get discouraged because um, I, I do everything. I, I don't. I'm not a Ford guy. I'm not a Chevy guy. I'm not a Mopar guy. I, I'm. I'll work on anything. I like them all. I think they all have good attributes to them. Um, some of these motors from all these manufacturers are really cool. I'm actually going to do a 502 Chevy. I know I keep telling you that for my personal '66 Chevy. So we got a 502 build coming up. Um, so stay tuned and. Uh, I'll see you soon.